everybody, welcome back to our August rendition of Let's Paint Live, where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. My name is Emma Panuski. I'm a content creator here at Plaid, and tonight I am very, very excited to paint with you all our August Let's Paint Live pool time. So we are kind of ending the summer months, transitioning into fall with one last summer painting to um, end the summer season of 2022. So I am very excited to paint along with you tonight. Um, a couple of things you'll want to know before we get started is like always, Stephen White is in the studio with us tonight. So if you have any comments or questions while we're painting together tonight, then make sure to comment them down below. Stephen will be reading all of your comments and questions and he can answer them himself or relay those questions over to me. Hey Emma, how are you? Good Stephen, how are you? We're happy to have you here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is that this video is being recorded, so it's going to live right here forever. So if you're having trouble with the pacing and keeping up with our pace that we're working with tonight, because we are going to finish it in just about an hour, then just rest assured that you can always go back and rewind or pause at your own leisure and paint at your own pace. So that's another great thing to know. Um, of course, we are painting with our Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit, which is listed in the chat below. You can find that kit on plaidonline.com slash let's paint, where you can also find the full gallery of all of our previous Let's Paint Live paintings. There are dozens of great paintings to choose from to really hone your painting skills, and it's always a lot of fun, um, if I do say so myself. So um, we're painting with our Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit, like always, with our beloved Folk Art Acrylic Paint. But I also, if you don't have your Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit, um, I'm going to quickly run through all of the colors that you will want to have and really all the supplies that you'll want to have to follow along with us tonight. So we have Dutch Aqua, Aqua, Lime Green, Pure Orange, Wicker White, Linen, Classic Green, Coffee Bean, French blue, bright pink, and daffodil yellow. So those are all of the folk art acrylic paints that you're gonna wanna have on hand to paint along with me tonight. Um, of course, I have a water basin, and I have my 10-piece um, Artist Variety brush set, which you can also find on platonline.com. But the great thing is that that brush set comes in our Let's Paint Live kit. So if you picked up the Let's Paint Live kit, you don't have to worry about that. We also provided tonight a downloadable pattern that you can go ahead and cut out. It's this little donut shape that's going to help us with our tubes. So if you are not feeling confident drawing a perfect circle, you don't need to worry about it. This is on platonline.com in the supply list for you to download for free, of course. Um, you're going to need a rectangle canvas. And then tonight uh, we have a piece of palette paper and a blow dryer. So we can just keep things moving and we don't have to wait for some of our layers to dry. So without further ado, are you guys ready to paint? I think we are. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my canvas aside so we can reference back to it together. So Emma, I have a question that's not necessarily related to this painting, Thanks. but it is a Let's Paint Live question. Okay. Um, are these colors available in the multi-surface formula? I'd love to paint this uh, for my porch by our pool. I love that idea. That's a great idea. So yes, a lot of these colors are available in our folk art multi-surface. Um, I don't believe that all of them are, but I am sure that you can find uh, really easy substitutes all in our folk art multi-surface family. Um, so like if, if there's one you know, yellow that you see um, that's not in multi-surface, if it's not the daffodil yellow, then you can really choose any bright yellow, any aqua, any dark green, any bright green, and so on. So yes, we definitely have all the paints that you would want to paint with in our multi-surface kit. I love that idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, that would be fun for us to do in the future. Make a Let's Paint Live multi-surface kit. Yeah. That would be cool. It's a great idea. Yeah, we always have uh, this kit uh, you know, available because it's it's it makes it easy for you. Like all of our Let's Paint Live paintings are done with this kit and it's just easy to have it all in one place. Uh, but you can definitely substitute any colors that you're missing or running low on for something else. Absolutely. Okay, you guys, so I think we're ready to get started. So the first things that we're going to add to our palette tonight is some Dutch Aqua. And some French Blue, two really beautiful pale blue colors. 
Oh, I also forgot to mention, um, tonight you'll also want to have a white piece of chalk, just like a traditional, like even if you have sidewalk chalk, that's great too, or a pencil, preferably a piece of chalk, but a pencil would work just fine too. Okay, so with our French blue and our Dutch aqua on our palette, we are going to take our three quarter inch flat brush and we are going to start about an inch down or more from our um, the top of our canvas tonight and we are going to start painting in our French blue. So one thing to note is that we're gonna, as we go um, across our canvas from left to right, we're not gonna paint all the way over here because we don't need to. And I'll share with you guys in a little bit why. But right now, you can leave some of that space blank and you just wanna follow along with me and paint in the areas that we paint. I think um, something else worth mentioning, Emma, is that we are streaming uh, our Let's Paint Live tonight on YouTube and Facebook. And that's sort of a new thing we've been doing. A lot of people don't know that we are streaming on YouTube as well. Um, so if you guys hadn't subscribed to our YouTube channel, Plaid Crafts, you should definitely check it out. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great thing to point out, Stephen. And we do a lot of YouTube exclusive streams there too, things that you won't find on Facebook. So it's definitely a good reason to go check it out. Absolutely, and on the topic of um, all of the different platforms that we go live on, of course we go live here on Facebook and here on YouTube, but we also do, um, we make a lot of great content and sometimes go live on Instagram, so follow us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. All of our different platforms are the same as you see them here, Plaid Crafts. So follow Plaid Crafts on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. We, um, a lot of people don't know this, but we go live on Amazon too. Yes, absolutely. So if you are a frequent shopper, on Amazon.com, then make sure to check out all of our different brand pages. And so Amazon is a little bit different. Instead of following Plaid Crafts, you can actually just go ahead and follow all of your favorite Plaid products. So we have a Folk Art page, an Apple Barrel page, a Mod Podge page, and so on. And we go live on all of those different ones. So I started painting without explaining what I'm doing. I'm getting ahead of myself. I was excited about all of the different platforms that we stream on, but you guys will see. Now I'm adding in some of that Dutch Aqua that we added to our palette, and I am starting from the bottom. And I'm not quite touching our French blue yet, but I'm starting from the bottom about one third or so, and I am painting up. Emma, what size canvas are you using? That's a great question. I am pretty sure that we called out for tonight an 11 by 14, but any type of large-ish, or really just any type of rectangle canvas that you have will work just fine for this. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. Still working with that 3 quarter inch flat. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually double load my brush. So what that means is, Half of my brush, I'm going to apply some of my French blue to, just like that. So I'm dipping the corner in, like that. And then I'm going to flip it and then dip this half into my Dutch Aqua. So that when I'm done, my brush looks like this. So now I'm going to line those two colors up, my double loaded brush with the corresponding colors on the canvas. And moving left to right, moving horizontally, I'm going to start brushing onto my canvas and eventually as we kind of wiggle up and we wiggle down with those two colors, we are slowly blending those colors together. And the reason that we are double loading our brush is because we get a really beautiful, natural looking soft blend. And if you feel like your paint is dragging a little bit, whenever I double load my brush like this, sometimes I just like to 
really lightly dip a little bit of my brush into my water basin so that my um, paint stays really wet and it just really glides across my canvas beautifully. Okay, so your canvas should look a little something like this. And we are almost done with the pool portion of our pool time painting tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush and dry it. And now, since our paint is a little bit wet, for this next step, I would prefer our canvas to be dry. So I'm gonna take out my blow dryer and I'm gonna blow dry my painting to lock it in place. Okay, so now that our canvas is nice and dry, the next step is uh, we are going to add some of our aqua onto our canvas. And we don't need a whole lot of our aqua, so just a little tiny squirt, just like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and take that three quarter inch flat brush again. And since you can see our water basin is still pretty clean and we're only really working with blues, which are in the same, you know, tone, the same color family. I'm going to dip my brush into my water basin and add some of that water to my aqua to really water that down. So this next part of our painting, we are really trying to water down our aqua quite a bit until it is a very, very thin, watery consistency because um, the next step, we're going to kind of try to treat this almost like a stain. A little bit more water. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the bottom of our canvas of the areas that we've painted so far. And I'm gonna offload quite a bit so that there's not a whole lot of watered down aqua on my brush. And I'm going to start brushing that on. And as we start at the bottom introducing that watered down aqua, I'm gonna dip my brush right in my water. And when we do that, you will see that that water is wanting to pick up the aqua that is already on our canvas. And it's going to, as we paint and work our way up to the top, it's going to keep pulling that aqua, kind of like a watercolor. So we're pulling that aqua, and as we, um, we're not applying any more of our watered down aqua, we're just dipping into our water basin. And of course we have some of that aqua still on our brush, because we didn't try to rinse our brush or clean our brush. And as we work our way up to the top, we will have less and less of that rich aqua color. So it's really just like a beautiful wash. And we're gonna do that all the way up to the top. until we meet the top where our French blue starts. And I'm gonna come back down just to really smooth out all of that beautiful wash that we just gave our pool. Okay, so one more time before we move on to our next step. Oops, got a little bit of our wash on there. It's okay, you can wipe it off with a paper towel. I'm gonna to go ahead and blow dry our painting one more time to lock this in place. Alrighty, you guys, so now we're going to take a piece of our white chalk and we're going to start sketching some shapes onto our canvas. So the reason that I called out a piece of chalk as opposed to a pen or a pencil is because 
Um, I find that chalk is really, really easy and helpful to use in when you're trying to sketch on top of your paintings because instead of a pencil where you'd have to erase some of your pencil lines, and sometimes it gets kind of frustrating because if you paint on top of a tiny bit of that pencil line, your eraser doesn't work that well anymore because you have that barrier of the paint. So it won't be able to erase those pencil lines. You just have to keep painting on top of it until you can't see the pencil lines anymore. But with chalk, you can just use your fingers or a damp paper towel or a dry paper towel, a rag, whatever you have on hand, um, and it just wipes right off. So that's why we're using chalk tonight. But of course, if you don't have a piece of chalk, then feel free to use a pencil or whatever you like to sketch with at home. So really simply, we are going to mark out our pool shape. So we're kind of doing a little bit of a funky, irregular shape tonight. And I really, really want our pool to look very round. Another great thing about sketching with the chalk, you, like you saw me do, just there is that if you're not pleased with your initial markings, then you can just keep going and keep going. You don't have to worry about erasing it. You just have to dust it off. So now that we have marked out our pool shape, I'm going to set aside my chalk because we're going to pick it up again later. And I'm going to add some of our folk art linen to our palette. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up again. If you're following along, yes, so far we have only used our three quarter inch flat. We're making some big bold shapes. I'm gonna dry off my flat brush and I'm going to dip it into my folk art linen. And we are going to paint all of the negative space you see on the outer rim of where we marked out our pool shape with our chalk. I feel like maybe it's just because we're using it way more, but linen has become one of my new favorite folk art colors. You think so, Stephen? I don't know what it is because it's just like you could argue it's just like beige, you know, <laughs> like it's. But it, I, I maybe that's why I like it because yeah. it paints more like physical things. Like this is supposed to be concrete, you know. Totally, Stephen. Yeah. I, I love the linen too. Um, it's a very beautiful, warm, beigey color. Mm -hmm. It's a good one for sure. How are we doing in the chat, Stephen? Any comments, any questions? Uh, I think we are caught up. We have some people tuning in saying where they're watching from, which is always fun. We'd love yeah. to hear that. If you haven't let us know, let us know. Yeah, and another thing I wanna call out you guys is if you are brand new to one of our Let's Paint Live lessons or our Let's Paint Live parties, um, then um, you will be happy to know that we have a really awesome Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid. It is a group of all different skill levels of artists from beginners to intermediate to more advanced artists. Um, Chris Williams and Andy Jones are two of our great um, educational content creators here at Plaid and they produce um, several lessons a week to teach you some t tips and techniques and um, little paintings to do throughout the week. and. One of the, my favorite parts of that group is that once you paint along with us for a Let's Paint Live or really any of our painting classes, then a lot of times people post their finished paintings on that group and everyone in the group is so supportive. They like and they comment on all of the paintings and they give really great compliments and really great feedback. And uh, all of our instructors that teach our Let's Paint Live classes love to go onto the page and see what everybody painted. Um, it is really, really a fun, fun thing. So make sure to check out our plaid, or I'm sorry, our Let's Paint with Plaid group on Facebook. And I'm sure Stephen will go ahead and place that in the chat for you guys to take a look at. Yeah, we have some of our Let's Paint regulars here in the Ooh, chat. Hey that guys. I noticed. Um, so welcome back. And I'm sure that they can attest uh, how good of a Facebook group it is. Yeah, it's a really, really awesome Facebook group. Okay, so now that we have done that, I am actually going to go ahead and sketch out, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm going to go ahead and actually blow dry um, what we've painted so far.
Okay, you guys, so for our next step, we talked about having a downloadable um, free printable that you can find on platonline.com under this painting in our supply list. If you went ahead and printed that out, then take that, uh, make sure it's all cut out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint these shadows that are under our inner tubes. So taking our piece of chalk again, we're gonna position our the shadows of our tubes. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to get a good picture in your mind of where you want your actual tubes to live in your pool. So I'm thinking I want my actual tube to be about right here. So that means that I want my, you guys can see, I want my shadow to kind of be to the lower left corner of it, creating that shadow just about right there. So now that that's in place, I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm gonna sketch that out. And don't worry about having excess chalk lines because we can always just rub that off. So we'll have one shadow going right here. And then pick it up and let's decide we want our next shadow. So maybe like right, if we want our other tube right here and we'll have our shadow right there. And you'll notice our little yellow tube that's hanging out in the bottom left corner doesn't have a shadow. So you don't need to worry about a third one. Just like that, perfect. Okay, so now that those are in place, we are going to, can you guess which brush we're gonna use, Stephen? Go ahead and tell me, Emma. We're gonna use our three quarter inch flat. Wow. We're gonna dip into our watered down aqua. So this is just some aqua that we watered down a little bit earlier. If some of the water has evaporated, mine has a little bit, I'm just gonna add just a touch more water to make sure that our paint is nice and watered down because this is going to be a little bit more of an opaque wash. So we did a really thin, loose wash all over our pool with our aqua, bringing that aqua up with some water from our water basin but this one we want just to be a little bit more intense. So make sure there's a little less water in this. And we are going to use that mixture and fill that in our tube shadow that we just sketched out. Just like so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. And you can use um, your finger, you can use a damp rag or a, a dry paper towel, whatever. I'm just gonna erase these chalk lines that we made earlier. And one thing just to note is that when you do this, you just wanna make sure that the paint on either side is nice and dry because we don't wanna be rubbing that wet paint around and making marks where we don't want them to be. See, and it comes off so easily. Okay, so I'm going to take my three quarter inch flat brush again. Make sure it's nice and dry with a paper towel. And we're gonna start working on some of our little garden accents that are in our pool. So in order to do that, we are going to apply some coffee bean onto our palette. Okay, so what we're gonna do to achieve this, I'm gonna dip my brush into my coffee bean and we're gonna follow this line that we kind of created earlier with our pool. So we're following the curvature of our pool, kind of mirroring that, starting off to the side and creating our little garden. So I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So we're starting here and we're
called following our pool. And it's okay if you run out of paint. The initial brush strokes I typically like to kind of just do as a sketch to get my bearings. And then once you're pleased with that, you followed the curvature, then let's go ahead and fill that in. Okay, so a rule of thumb that I like to live by, work uh, smarter, not harder. So if it's a little bit easier for me to paint by just reconfiguring the um, position of my painting, then I will do that. So I'm going to flip my painting upside down so that I can do the same thing on these corners. And again, we are just following the natural line, maybe doing a little bit of a swoop here, following the natural line of our pool. Okay, two down, one to go. Flip it again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush. And now I am going to blow dry my painting to lock it in place one more time. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to take my damp paper towel, I'm going to rinse, rinse, I'm going to rub off our chalk that we created earlier. So we're left with our beautiful shadows. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take my chalk again and we are going to make the kind of ripples in our pool. So I want you guys have to have fun with this next step. This is going to be really, really abstract. If you're feeling confident, then you can go ahead and just take a small flat brush or a liner brush or a round brush, whatever you like to do to make fine lines, to just go ahead and start painting your white lines in. But I'm going to go ahead and start sketching it out. And to do that, I'm going to start at this top corner and I'm going to make one wiggly line, very loose, kind of going in all different directions, up and down. And then I'm going to start somewhere, um, not at the edge of my canvas, but somewhere along the, you know, uh, the line that we just made. 
and I'm going to keep making those squiggly lines like this. Keeping in mind that I kind of want to make some loose um, shapes like that. Okay, maybe starting up here. So we kind of want to make, I don't know what you would call it, but like some wiggly ovals, okay? We're looking for wiggly <laughs> ovals. I wish I had a better word for you all. I think that's perfectly descriptive. Okay, awesome. Okay, how is everyone's wiggly ovals looking? Let us know. <laughs> Okay, a couple more lines. Perfect. I'm pleased with the way that looks. Okay, so now that we've created our ripples, next we are going to add to our palette some wicker white. Okay, so now I'm going to take a small flat brush. I'm going to personally be working with a number two flat but I encourage you to use whatever kind of paintbrush you feel comfortable using whether uh, to make fine lines, whether it's a round brush or a liner brush. And our water basin is still pretty clean, so I'm gonna take some of that water from my water basin and dip it into my white. And the reason I'm doing that is because we want our paint to glide really, really smoothly and create some really smooth lines on our canvas. And um, the great thing about folk art acrylic is that it is so rich and creamy and it is so opaque in its nature. So we want to thin it down just a little bit so that it's a little less um, creamy and it just really glides really beautifully on our canvas. So next step, once our wicker white is a little bit watered down, we are going to fill in those chalk lines, those beautiful chalk lines that we just created. Of course, going over our tube shadows that we've created earlier. And the great thing about watering your paint down a little bit is that you will uh, see that you don't have to keep reapplying paint to your brush quite as often as well, which is just nice. And if you feel like your paint is still dragging a little bit, then I encourage you to just dip your brush in some water, mix a little bit more water into your wicker white, wicker white um, just so that your paint glides a little bit more smoothly. And of course, stopping our lines as we come to the edge of our pool. Gonna add a little bit more water to my wicker white here. These might be the best wiggly ovals I've ever seen. Oh, thank you, Stephen. That means so much to me.
Yeah, and you can definitely see why this would be easier to do with uh, chalk rather than pencil. Absolutely. Sometimes when you're working with white, um, just the nature of white, it's a little more transparent than other colors. So if you were to use a pencil to sketch out something like this, then you would have to probably apply a few coats to cover those pencil markings. But with the chalk, and of course the chalk is white, you really only need to have one coat, even though we watered down our paint quite a bit. And that's another thing that you would have to be working against um, with those pencil lines is because we watered down our paint. Yeah, definitely not impossible with pencil, but chalk's gonna make it easier. Yeah. Chalk is definitely a friend to have in your painting studio. That's right. I hope this goes for you guys at home too, but this was definitely a relaxing painting for me to create. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we had Kristen Walker um, say something about that too. Good. Super easy and cute. Good. She also said she's adding chalk to the Walmart shopping <laughs> list. Awesome. <laughs> And chalk is really inexpensive too. Probably more inexpensive than pencils. Mm. That's a good point. Okay, you guys. So once you get your squiggly ovals down, now we're going to add some little tiny dots like there are bubbles in our pool. So I'm gonna actually rinse my small flat brush. And I'm gonna flip my brush around so that we have the end of our brush this side. I'm gonna dip that into our wicker white. And kind of, you know, where the corners of our ovals are, we're gonna add a few little bubble dots. And just by super easy technique to make tiny little perfect dots is just use the end of your brush. It's a great little tip. Add a few more. Mm. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my paper towel, I'm just gonna wipe off the paint that's on the end of my brush. And now I'm gonna go into my Dutch Aqua with the same end of my small flat brush. And we are going to paint some of those dots on some of our white lines. Just a few. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe my brush off again. And I'm going to blow dry this. I think this is the last time we're gonna use the blow dryer tonight, you guys. So I'm okay. gonna blow, blow dry it one last time.
Okay, you guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, creating some of this greenery that you see in our little gardens. So to do that, we're going to add some classic green onto our palette. And some lime green. Okay, so next you'll want to take um, a small flat brush, maybe a little bit bigger than what we did to make our squiggly ovals. So I'm using a number eight flat. I'm going to dip it in my classic green. I'm going to offload it just a little bit, which just means we're moving uh, some of that paint so that we don't have too much on our brush. And I'm going to hold my brush perpendicular to my canvas. I'm going to start in where I want the center of my ferns to be, and I'm going to push out like that. Push, push, push. And you will notice the more pressure you have on your brush, then the wider your lines are going to end up. So if I apply more pressure in the center, and then naturally as I swoop out, our lines get thinner because we're just applying less pressure as our brush kind of comes off of our canvas. So we're going to keep doing that, starting in the center, push out, push out, push out. Maybe some of it kind of going off onto our concrete here and intersecting some of our other leaves because um, I personally, I like for this painting to show more green than brown. So I want to make sure that a lot of that brown is covered. So going out from our little garden and intersecting some of those existing leaves. Emma, we have a really nice comment on our YouTube stream that I wanted to read to you. Okay. From Sue, uh, they say, Hi, Plaid Crafts. I just wanted to say thank you for decades of fun using a variety of your products. I started with craft paint and Donna Dewberry one stroke, and I use many products. Thanks. That is awesome, Sue. Well, welcome. We are so lucky to have you tonight. Um, we're so glad you found us, and thank you so much for that lovely comment. We're glad that you enjoy Plaid products. Uh, we certainly do as well. Okay, I'm going to flip my canvas like we talked about earlier. Smarter, not harder. And keep going onto our smaller little garden pot areas. Okay, so now at this point, if there's a little too much brown in your areas, you can kind of just kind of dab, 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 or you want some more green to be. And now I'm going to rinse my brush, make sure it's nice and dry. And then with the same brush, I'm going to pick up some of that lime green, and we're going to make little accents on top of our classic green with that same technique. So shorter brush strokes, because we don't want to be covering our classic green, but this is really just acting as an accent. Just a few touches here and there to really make that pop.
Okay, you guys, so I'm going to rinse my brush another time and make sure that your pool is nice and dry because we're going to take out our template again and we're going to line up our template a little bit to the top right of our shadows and I want to make sure that the um, width of our tube is kind of falling in line almost with our um, shadow because we don't want to be covering it. We still want to see some of that hole kind of like you see here. We still see some of the hole so just kind of make sure like that is good. Now hold it down and then I'm going to sketch it out. Okay, same thing with this bottom one. And we, I would like to make sure that it's kind of um, in the same positioning because we want it to look like, you know, the sun is up here, so it's creating these shadows and the shadows are falling in the same direction. Okay, and don't forget our little yellow guy, so we're going to make one right here too, in the corner. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some color to this painting, you guys. So we're going to add to our palette some bright pink, some pure orange, and some daffodil yellow. Okay, to start of the show, let's bring back our three quarter inch flat brush. Make sure it's nice and dry. And we're gonna start filling in those holes with whatever bright colors that you want. So, of course, we chose bright pink, um, pure orange, and daffodil yellow, but honestly, you can choose whatever colors you want your little inner tubes to be. That's kind of part of the fun of this painting, is that it's pretty customizable. Sue says that folk art really has almost every color possible in a bottle ready to use. Must be thousands of colors. <laughs> I think you're right about the thousands of colors. That's pretty Sue. accurate. <laughs> we have 
lots of awesome products to choose from and folk art the folk art mat line definitely has uh, any color you could think of or want and yeah even if you expand it like to multi-surface and stuff too forget multi -surface, about multi-surface enamel all of our great specialty formulas glitterific um, dragonfly color shift treasure gold mm -hmm. metallic yep. we could go on all night neon we won't bore you neon did you say neon did not say neon steven Okay, so if you feel the need, you can go ahead and kind of just touch up. If they're not as opaque as you want, I might just do that. Just give it a once over so that those colors really pop. Um, sometimes it's a little bit hard once you're painting such a bright color over a dark or a, you know, low hue like our blue is. So I'm just going to touch that up. Feel free. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys, so now we have, I think, one last step. Let's add some highlights to our tubes. So I'm going to add some wicker white right here. I'm going to take my number 12 flat. I'm going to take a little scoop of my pure orange here and a bigger scoop of my wicker white. I'm going to mix that up nice and well. So that we get a really soft, creamy orange color. Okay, so now, holding my brush perpendicularly, kind of starting a little bit to the left of the direct top of our tube, I'm going to touch down, holding my brush perpendicularly, and make a C swooping motion. And as I come to the center of the tube, I'm actually going to apply more pressure down to my brush and then release some of that pressure as I complete that C stroke. So as you'll see, when we applied more pressure, we get a wider brush stroke. Kind of we talked about that a little bit in the beginning. So in the middle, we apply more pressure, and then as we come on the other side, we lighten some of that. Okay, and now we're gonna keep repeating that same technique with our daffodil yellow and our bright pink. Adding some white to it, at a 50-50 ratio, and then making that little C-stroke to add some highlight. Okay, last but not least, do the same thing with our daffodil yellow. I feel like this as this painting is very quintessential summer, Stephen. This is reminding me of like a lemon snow cone. That reminded mm. me of like an orange creamsicle. Oh yeah. Okay, same thing. Okay. One final step. I'm going to grab my number six flat. I'm going to dip into my wicker white and holding my brush perpendicularly, following those highlight lines, coming a little bit to the center. We're just going to make some smaller C strokes to really be the icing on the cake. Or should I say the icing on the creamsicle? <laughs> that would be more accurate to our painting. <laughs> Boop. 
It's also important to do the boop boop yeah. while you. Don't forget to say that at home. Boop yep. boop. Okay. And then, if you've painted with us before, you know we're not done until we sign our painting. So choose your favorite color that you used in our class tonight. I think I might go for some of this Dutch Aqua. Water it down a little bit. Here's a tip when you're making your signature or making some fine lines again. So if your paint has been drying this whole time, maybe water it down a little bit so it glides really smoothly. And in the lower right corner, sign your painting. And that means we are done. Ta -da. So, ta-da! So everybody, thank you so, so, so much for painting along with us tonight. Oh, don't forget to erase your chalk lines. <laughs> thank you so much for painting along with us tonight. It was such a pleasure painting with you. Don't forget to um, remember to tune in the first Thursday of every single month right here at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time where you can join us for another Let's Paint Live party where we paint a painting in just about an hour. Don't forget to um, like us on all of our platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Amazon, TikTok, Instagram. Um, check out that Let's uh, Paint with Plaid group. Let's Paint with Plaid, it's a really awesome, super supportive group. Um, they will be so welcoming to you all. And for more project ideas and inspiration, go to Plaid Online.